All right. So if you're watching your very first live critique here in the group, the deal is I, uh, I go through 20 images here in Photoshop. You'll be able to see um, everything that I'm referring to. I'm going to use my Wacom tablet and pen here to kind of draw on the images and, and that way you'll be able to understand a little more what I'm referring to. We're going to talk about lighting, we're going to talk about composition, camera angles, posing, styling, you name it, everything. Um, when it comes to critiquing images, I, I did a live the other day actually into the group about giving you know, constructive feedback and for me it's, a, it's really important because I remember getting feedback a long, long time ago and I literally felt like my soul had been destroyed because the person was so brutal but they didn't care how it was going to affect me. Um, that can that can go one or two ways. That can you know stop someone from chasing their dreams and following, you know, the path that they really want to follow. And it can be, you know, like I said, soul destroying. Um, another thing that it can do is motivate them to prove people wrong. And that's why that's how I took that that criticism, that feedback. I um, I worked my butt off to prove people wrong. So the person that is out there in um, in the big bad web that said that seeing a baby in a fruit bowl wanted to make them vomit, yes, um, that fruit bowl has paid off really well for me over the years <laughs> and my business. Um, anyway, when you do submit your work for feedback um, and I give a critique, I use the kiss, kick, kiss method and that means I'm going to focus on the good elements, I'm going to then focus on things that need to be improved and explain how they can be improved and then, you know, I like to really encourage people because I don't want people to, you know, feel like they're, they're not good enough or their work is never going to be good enough because, you know what, it is a long road for some people. We, we're all different, we travel at different speeds, we learn differently. So how we um, process this information and then how we, we take that knowledge and, and turn it around, put it to, to good use, learn from, evolve from, all of that kind of stuff is, is going to be different for everyone. And we're going to have different factors that are con going to contribute to how fast we, um, we grow within our photography. You know, I know a lot of young mums who are just starting out and they've got young children. That's their priority. So um, I want you to really focus on that and not be so hard on yourself. But yeah, we've got 20 images here. I don't know whose photographs they are, um, each one, because when the when people submit them, they come through um, as an email. Obviously, I see whose who's name it is, but I don't see the image. Garrett then exports the images from the website where they're uploaded to, and he puts them into Photoshop. And I do it this way because um, I, what I look for when I first look at an image is impact and the first thing that stands out to me. And that's usually what I, what I respond and comment on, on um, during these critiques. So that's the way I like to do it. Very similar to a judging process if you are considering entering a competition for the first time. It's a really big eye opener in terms of the way judges look and view the, the photographs. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was very shocked when I saw the results for WPPI first thing this morning. I know we've all been waiting a, a while for those results to come through, so I was very, very excited about that. Uh, I haven't entered the, the first half in probably about three, four years now, so I thought, why not have a go, put my work out there. I am chasing um, a bigger reward by doing that this year, and I haven't really talked about it too much because... I enter awards for, for very personal reasons, um, obviously to grow and, and push myself outside my comfort zone and see what I'm actually capable of. But I'm one day I would love to achieve my Grandmaster at WPBI. So that's my ultimate goal. I need nine and a half points to do that. So I got a gold award um, this morning and that means I've got two points uh, towards, another two points towards that. So now I only need seven and a half points. So one day I'm going to get there to my Grand Masters and um, hopefully it's it's soon. <laughs> but you know what, it can take a lot longer. Like I might not get any more awards this year when I go to the print comp. So fingers crossed, but um, that's what I'm chasing and that's that's why I push myself so hard because, um, you know, I, yeah, this little baby photographer, mum with a camera, we'll get there one day. But I think we should start. 
because I can talk all day, and you know that. <coughs> all righty. <laughs> Someone said my hair is hot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, so we can see our first image here. We have got, um, oh gosh, look at this. Okay, here we go. Look at that face. I am really, that, that little expression is quite beautiful. So when I look around the image, I'm seeing, you know, the, the color palette is all really similar. The styling, a lot of um, thought and effort's gone into that. The wrapping is done, you know, really well. It's nice and smooth. It's, um, it's been put together really, really well. And there's a, there's a couple of little things that I can probably point out which can make this image um, amazing. So, because it is absolutely beautiful, but I think there's just a few little things that we can, we can work on here. So when I have a close look here, you can see the face is nice and warm, um, but the skin, the skin tone in the hands here is just a little um, cooler. It's a little bit more magenta. So just warming those skin tones up so that they're consistent throughout the entire um, baby will really benefit here and just fixing those little bent up fingers and I know it's hard with some babies you know they want to close those fists but just get that safe shot and then come back in put your finger underneath those fingers and curl them out another thing that I'm looking for here and you can see as I bring the image to the top of the um, the, the page there so I've got a straight line where that ruler is, the bed is not quite straight. So that means that perspective is just off a little bit. So you gotta get that camera angle just right. And if you can't do it in camera, because obviously we're looking at a, you know, a multitude of things to get that exposure perfect, what you wanna do is, um, is use the transform tool. I'll just show you very quickly. There's a few ways you can do it, but one very quick way. Create a copy layer, Command J, Command T. Now if you hold the Command key in, and I am using a Mac for those of you that use PC, Hold the command key in, you can bring the top of that frame up. So very subtle, but you can see if I turn that layer off, it's just going to straighten and, um, and fix that perspective. And just down the bottom here again with the bottom, bringing that side up. So the reason that it's off there is because you were just slightly off to the right when capturing um, the bed there but I always find when you are photographing something that's got quite sort of solid straight lines around the edge of it you do have to try and get those as straight as possible in camera um, because it can really sort of mess with the composition there and the balance of the frame so just kind of coming over a little bit more and, and having a look at the the top and the bottom of that bed uh, in terms of your um, your your framing in camera. That's the word I'm looking for today. <laughs> well done. Bear with me while I get that out. Another sip of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Take that off. That's annoying me. Sorry, everyone. And yeah, just bringing that um, that bed up as well, so you've got equal distance from the top and the bottom and the sides. So that way you've got that beautiful balance all the way around. Um, it is hard to get it all perfect in camera. I know that. The other thing that I'm looking for here is these brighter sort of edges up the top here. You can tone those down really easy in, in post-production um, or using a darker backdrop and that's going to bring your eye more to the front of the image here when the, when the background is darker. So for example, um, you can use, I mean there's again a multitude of ways to do this. So just changing your brush to multiply and you can come in and you can darken down these areas and what that's going to do is blend that background a little better and it's now going to bring your eye towards the baby so it's a little less distracting so that's another little tip also when I zoom in we can see that there's um, a lot of texture I'll bring my brush back to red Can see that there's a lot of texture um, around the eyes here you can see the detail there but the skin softening that has been done over the baby's forehead and the cheeks is really really soft so if you have a look I can see lots of texture and detail here but the skin has been over processed um, and softened a little too much so I know when you've got babies with um, with uh, skin problems like red blotchy skin and things like that 
Um, it can be difficult. There's, there's many ways you can fix that. Um, my beautiful skin and details action set is perfect. I've got a blot, blotchy skin and a skin smoothing. And how they work is that they, they leave texture and detail in the skin. Um, I know that frequency separation also works as well. But you want to be able to get through your editing process as quickly as possible. And if you have a look over here on the hands, they're really sharp. Um, there's a lot of detail there. So you've just got to be consistent where you are softening skin and leaving texture. Alrighty, and just reducing some of the reds there in those shadows on the baby's face. But other than that, great job. I, like again, I really do enjoy um, the color palette and the, the styling here. And you can see a lot of details gone into it. So it's just a few other little things that you can um, you can work on there to perfect that. All right. Okay. So again, great, um, great styling in terms of color palette, like the, the wrap and the blanket and the headband, you know, they're, they're lovely and soft and they all go really well together and blend. The one thing that's kind of standing out for me here at the moment is just how big that baby's body is. So that means that your camera angle is coming in from down here when it should be coming in from up here. So if you just move your body and the camera around to the baby's face so that the face is the closest thing to the camera, that what that does is it's going to minimize the, 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 the body of that baby and it's going to make, break, make your eye go closer to that baby's face because it is quite small here in comparison to the rest of that body. Um, you can do a few things in post-production to minimize it, but it's better to get that perfect in camera. One thing with this particular pose that can help is because if you do come around to the left and you start photographing from this angle, um, the top of the baby's head and the forehead are going to be closer to the camera. So you've got to bring that chin forward. So what I always like to do is, is kind of grab the baby's head and just give it a little turn up towards that light source. Um, lifting that chin up and then popping a little bit of a support underneath the this area here of the baby's head so it stays in that position because they do have that tendency to kind of curl down into a little bit of a ball. Um, is this video going to be available here in the group? I won't be able to watch everything live. Yes, it is. All of the critiques are recorded while they're live and they stay in the group. You can go back to the search bar at any time, type in image critique and you'll see every critique come up from every month they're also available on my youtube channel to watch too so you can go there and, and watch those as well as a lot of other videos but yeah that's probably you know the one thing with this image that i would fix and then just allowing a little bit more room down here as that crop is really quite tight to the bottom of the baby that's gonna just give it a bit more breathing space but um, in terms of skin tones they look lovely bringing that chin up um, i can see can see that the light source is coming down across you know from that direction but the ba the top of the baby's head here um, in terms of the forehead is a little darker obviously to this area here so bringing that chin up will bring that forehead up so more light will fall evenly across the face will really help this image so next time just try and get that chin up a little higher towards the light move your body around so that that face is closer to um, to the camera. What I like to imagine is that if I'm holding the camera, there is a straight line from the end of the lens to the top of the baby's nose. So that baby's face is nice and square onto the lens, and that way, you know, you're gonna you're gonna see that face. Um, I'm just seeing all of these beautiful comments come through. You're gonna see all of that baby's face, and you're gonna bring that chin up towards that light source. Great job wrapping though, um, just a little bit tighter in terms of um, um, how you pull that wrap around. Okay, so for an image like this, would you tuck the bottom in a bit with the liquify layer? Do you know what? You could use liquify, you could use um, the warp tool, but you want to get it right in camera. So for example, if I was going to do it, um, I try not to use liquify as as well, liquify is one of my favorite tools, so I shouldn't really say that. <laughs> <laughs> With things like this, though, when I'm moving large areas. So when I say large area, like if we just use the lasso tool, you can see that's a large part of the image that you want to try and move and reduce in size. So, for example, if I was going to try and minimize it in post, 
um, I would select it, create a copy layer of that selection, take it into transform, right, go down to warp, and then I would tuck it in. But again, the bottom half of the baby is closest to the lens. So it is the bottom half of the baby, the, the whole body of the baby is going to look a lot larger than the face. So it's always best to try and get this perfect in camera. I talk about this and so much more in getting it right in camera because like I'm sitting here and fiddling with an image that I shouldn't have to fiddle with. So when you get it right in camera, you're gonna reduce your editing time and um, you know, breeze through your sessions so much faster because it's all going to come to you um, as second nature the more you do it and the, when you're looking for these images, like looking at, you know, these setups through your lens. Alrighty. Yeah, keep keep popping more questions and things like that here into the um, into the comments because Garrett's here, he's monitoring it because I'm obviously looking at the screen and I'm talking to you or babbling and uh, he's going to let me know if there's any questions. So if you've got an image in here or if you've got a question about anything I'm talking about, um, whack them into the, the comments because that's what I'm here for. All right, look at this smile. Um, the styling again, you guys are just nailing it. You're doing so well. I love all of these color palettes and, and these beautiful tones because when you're using really bright contrasting colors um, that don't really complement each other, they become really distracting in the image. But what I'm seeing here is that the babies are the main focus because you know the, the combination of tone and, and color is working really well for, um, for these photos. Okay, that smile is priceless. Any parent is going to absolutely adore this. And the baby looks lovely and comfortable. Again, the one thing that I'm noticing here is that, that this part of the, let me get my little pen, this part of the baby is closest to the camera than anything else. So even though you've got that beautiful smile, you still want to just move your body around to that right and be closer to that face. It's going to minimize the size of the baby. Um, you've got a lot of detail here in terms of, I'm not quite sure what aperture you've shot this at, but you can see that the focal plane, you know, um, uh, isn't very shallow. So that means that you've got, you know, detail down here and you've got detail up here which is fantastic. Like if I'd been shooting this at 2.8 um, and I'd zoomed in and focused on the eye here from this exact camera angle, a lot of this would be blurry and soft. So you've done really well to keep the, um, the detail and, and sharpness there throughout the baby. But what I'm looking at over here is quite a large area of the frame that is very soft and blurred out. So then we've got it over here. So it's not consistent with your um, aperture and your depth of field. So you do need to be careful with that. There's a lot of area around this baby that's not really adding to the frame. It's quite distracting. So looking at things like that, bringing your body around to the right. And I know trying to crop this um, would be quite difficult because you crop into the feet there, but um, yeah, a few little things like that to think about. And um, there's nothing really else I can say about that. Just be careful when you are sharpening your images. Um, we're not over sharpening, um, especially around the edge of the baby. So that's one thing because it can look kind of um, uh, wiry, I suppose, and, and really stand out. So when you sharpen, try to focus on the areas um, that, are, that you want to draw the viewer's eye to, like the face and the eyes and things like that. And that way it's, um, it's not gonna create any problems. But yeah, just be careful with with that. Do you know what I don't have up on my window here is... There it is. Ah, there it is. This is Garrett's laptop, not mine. <laughs> my poor laptop. Um, for anyone actually in the group that has not really heard from me so much um, or hasn't got an, an email response or anything as quickly as they'd hoped, my laptop went for a swim. Yep about two weeks ago, so it's been a very painful, long process, and I still don't have a laptop that works. <laughs> so at the moment, I'm lugging my 27-inch iMac back and forth from the studio each day until I get my new laptop. Yeah. 
Anyway, so one thing you need to be sh um, careful about when you are working on your images, and I can see up here this whole entire area is very, very bright, and you can see some information there just kind of coming really close to the end of that histogram, um, which means that there's not going to be a lot of detail there, so you do need to keep an eye on that histogram when you're shooting. Um, so having that up on the back of your camera at all times because that's what's going to tell you whether you've got that exposure right but also during your post-production to make sure that you're not pushing that image outside um, the, the, you know, the, the, the edges of that histogram in terms of losing detail in your blacks and, and whites. Alrighty. Oh. My goodness. That is so sweet. Before we move on to the next one, can you make your brush just a teeny bit bigger? Okay, is it really little? I can, I can see it. Is it better? It'll, yeah, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's for Garrett, not for anyone out there. Just critiquing Kelly's work. Yeah, thanks. And, oh my God, I used to have to do that with my iMac. <laughs> yeah, it's not fun, I tell you. It's not fun at all. Okay. Um... Yeah, I can see the camera angle is great in terms of getting that baby's head closest to, to the camera. One thing I'm kind of looking at is just how the baby is lying within that frame. So having a look at the, the way that the baby's kind of coming around there. So one thing you can do is kind of straight that baby up a little bit. And you can see it's not very round. So you've got a beautiful round um, head at the top, but the body is kind of coming down and it's not looking very round there. So pulling up the placardi around the baby and just around this area so you can see how the flaccardi is coming around and meeting the side of that wrap if you do that and be consistent around the entire outside of that baby it's going to make the baby look a little bit um, more rounder and you're going to hide some of these shadows down here and reduce the the size of the bottom um, as well just peeking through down here so that's kind of one thing that I'm looking for. Hand placement's beautiful. That little teddy bear underneath the face is helping to keep that face up. Um, the bow, when you're tying bows, things like that, keep them really minimal. Uh, anything that you add to an image should complement it, not be distracting. And Because we can see one big loop here and one tassel, but we can't really see the rest. I can see there's something down here, but it's kind of blending in. So just reduce the size of that so it's not, not dragging your eye away from the baby there. I can see that the, the little nose here is quite bright and the back of the hand is quite bright here. So with your lighting you want to make that nice and consistent and soft. Um, so just popping a support and not at the top of the baby's head but at the back of the baby's head is going to lift that chin up so you can get that face coming up towards that light source a little more. So it's not just going to come down and hit the top of the nose and then continue to fall off onto the baby's hand because obviously they're the two. Um, highest points here in terms of uh, where that light's coming in it's closest to the light so you want to bring that chin up to get more light down here to, to have a bit more of an even fall off there uh, other thing that I'm looking at here is the what do we got here is the color tone here in the feet so we've got beautiful you know soft creamy skin tones up here and then the feet are just a little cooler and um, <laughs> someone's phone's ringing, and just a little, a little red in terms of tone there, so evening that out. And you can see with that direction of light coming straight down from the top there, it has lit the top half of the flaccardi here, that cream flaccardi. So you can see obviously as that light, um, you know, falls off, that it becomes softer over here, so it's darker down the bottom. Bring that light source around on more of an angle towards the baby's face so that it comes down and across, not so much from the top of the baby's head. What I'm always looking for in terms of the direction of that light is the shadow around the nose. So if you come in nice and close here, we can see that the shadows are down here underneath the nose. This is what some people refer to as butterfly lighting. Um, you know, that might be a personal preference. What I'm always looking for is just a little fall off of light coming down around the side of the nose, not under the nose. It's a little bit more flattering. Um, and then you won't end up with these hot spots because as that light comes down, so how do I explain this? <laughs> if the light was directly above my head here, um, where this light is coming down from the top of the baby's head, I'll make that a bit bigger. 
um, it's going to hit the top of my nose because my nose sticks out. If I lift the chin up, then that light is going to fall across my face more. So it's going to be a little bit more even. If the chin comes down, um, the nose is sticking out. So the light's going to skim down across here. It's going to miss my forehead. It's going to hit the top of my head where it's hitting the top of the fricati. It's going to hit the top of my nose. My if the hands are flaced here like they are with the baby, it's then going to hit the hand because that's the next brightest part um, coming down across the baby, if that makes sense. So bring that light around to the side, lift that chin up, and you're going to get a more consistent fall off of light and you won't have hot spots um, like you do here. Okay, I am wondering about head placement in general. Should I always try to give baby's head a tilt to the side or is it great to keep it vertical? Do you know what? That might be a personal preference, but I always like to create a little bit of a shape. So this particular baby's head here is, is quite straight in line with its body. I do like to give it a little bit of a turn. However, I do see a lot of babies that have their heads turned all the way around. Um, this actually can put a lot of strain on their neck, their muscles and um, their breathing. So what you want to be careful is that when you are turning that baby's head, um, you are not going to hurt that baby at all or jeopardize its breathing and oxygen levels. Because um, even though it, looks, it might look cute and you might want to get that baby into a complete ball, just be very careful with overextending that neck because it can be dangerous but you do want to create a nice curly shape. So just a slight turn, I always find, makes the baby look comfortable and then just gives you that beautiful curve. Good question. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay, next image. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so again the styling you guys are just doing really well with keeping all of these these tones quite consistent here the first thing that i look at when i see this image is the headband and one of the main reasons that i'm seeing it um and it's so pr prominent in the image is because what it's doing is it's sitting right on that hairline so we've got skin down here and we've got really dark hair up here so with headbands, try to place them in the hair back here, uh, not right on that hairline, because what that does is it creates a block between those, those two contrasting tones, because obviously skin's a lot brighter than dark hair. Um, so you want to bring that headband back. And what I find with you know bright parts of um, headbands and things like that, if they are closest to that light source, the light is going to um, make them very, very bright and obviously stand out. The brightest part of an image is always going to be where that eye goes to. Um, it's just, it's natural because we are, you know, literally, I'm not sorry, not literally, we are um, programmed to kind of, you know, look at things that grab our attention. So that means anything that's very, very bright or anything that's very dark. So with the direction, in saying that, with the direction of that light, and my brush size changes depending on how big these files are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me bring this over here. Okay, so with the direction of that light, you can see that it's quite high above that baby in terms of those catch lights in the eye. So if we zoom in, oh, we can even see the photographer in here. <laughs> so that light is very, very high coming down um, across the baby's face. So that's what happens when, for example, the light is straight. So if you've got that baby on a, on a posing bag, for example, so the baby's laying on the posing bag um, right here. Let's just say this is my baby. <laughs> full screen. <laughs> go full screen. I don't know if you want to go full screen for this demonstration. Give you a bit more Okay, if, um, if this is your posing bag and you've got that baby laying on the posing bag and I can see that the light's coming in from the top of the baby's head, if you've got it straight like this, it is going to skim across the baby's head and it is going, especially if the baby's flat like this, if this is the head, um, it is going to come across and create, um, you know, those highlights which we were talking about in the previous image like this is doing. So it's almost like if that baby was standing up and the light was in the ceiling coming down, it's gonna do the exact same thing. So what I like to do with my light source is elevate it slightly and tilt it down. 
But if, because if you elevate that light, so it's up here, not down here, so the light's coming this way, you want that light to come down this way. So that's always a really great thing to remember because you're going to get a more even um, and consistent light across the baby's face because as that light comes down, you can see as it's coming, you know, obviously down from the top of the baby's head, you've got a shadow here. Um, the top of the nose is very, very bright because it's obviously high. So the light's coming down and hitting that nose. And then you've got a darker area down here. When you get that even, even you know, consistent light across the baby's face, you'll also um, have better skin tones. So a lot of people don't realize that when that lighting is off and you're trying to lift shadows and things like that, um, you're going to be working with a lot of red skin tones. So you're going to get um, a, a much better even consistency in terms of um, skin tone as well with placing that light um, in a different position. It is very hard to explain without a light and a baby. <laughs> so I'm hoping that you understood that, um, that example with my hands. But yeah, I love the expression. Just be careful when that, that chin does come up a little bit that you're not shooting straight up the baby's nose here because you know we're seeing those um, those dark nostrils so you want to always try and elevate the top of the baby's head and that way the baby's face is going to be closer to your camera especially when you're shooting above them but yeah I really like the the simple capture here and the styling just be careful though when you're using wraps and things like that that they're not hitting the edge of the screen and drawing your eye away from the subject and then down here where we've just cropped through this little hand um, when you crop through you you it's almost like amputating you know um, a baby in an image that's why i sort of refer to it you don't want to cut off any fingers when you are cropping those photos so just be careful um, with the light elevated and tilted would you aim it directly at the baby or feather it across? Always feather, but it depends on your light. So some lights are more powerful than others. You just have to play with that um, in terms of the placement, how close you have that light um, and how high you obviously need it. This is where, you know, practice makes perfect. And you can do this with anything. You can put, you know, um, a $5 doll from Kmart on the posing bag. And I like to buy dolls when I'm doing this that have eyes open. Um, and I explain that. Obviously, I'm making a doll, but its eyes won't be open. But if you're photographing slightly older kids and then they're going to have their eyes open, it's always a really good play, um, way to look at where those catch lights are when you are practicing. And ultimately, in the eye, you do want to have them quite high. But I like to have my catch lights sort of sitting, you know, quite high but not too high so that the the eyelashes and the because you can see if we go in here you can see that the the eyebrow and the eyelid and the eyelashes are all creating shadows so if you just bring that light up a little higher and feather it depending on your light source um, across the babies you you're not going to have those shadows in the eye itself um, but yeah it's it's it depend it'll depend on the actual light your modifier and so many different things even if you're using um, natural light you know feathering that with a scrim with sheer curtains anything that you know can soften that light um, you can direct that natural light as well by for example blocking if it's a floor to ceiling window blocking the light from you know the floor up to possibly in line with the baby um, on the posing bag, the height of your posing bag, and that's gonna give you a little bit more of a direction coming across. So yeah, you do have to play with your light without knowing what type of light or modifier you're using. Um, it's very hard to, to give you an exact answer for that. But you always wanna create beautiful soft light. So if that means feathering it, by all means feather. Um, and you know what a lot of people say, oh, but I can't get into a uh, position to get the right shot I'm blocking my light turn that if you're using a big modifier turn it towards you so that the the fall off of light coming off the edge of that soft box um, that's closest to the baby is the light that you're using to light your subject because um, you don't that light doesn't have to be facing that baby directly for you to, to stand in front of it 
but it will depend obviously on how powerful your light is, whether you're using con continuous light or strobe um, and those different types of modifiers because you've got um, umbrellas, you've got soft boxes, and then obviously the different sizes of those soft boxes as well. And then you've got windows. <laughs> <laughs> and then don't let get me started on where the sun should be in comparison to your window. <laughs> That's always a fun topic. Oh, I mean, for, for many years, people used to always say that, you, you know, your window had to be whatever southeast facing or whatever it was. But do you know what? It depends on where you live in the world, um, for starters. Where, and, and obviously, you're not going to go and buy a house purely on the direction that that sun is going to, to fall off on. So for many years, um, I shot in a studio at home in a very small room and it was on this side of the house um, and the windows were over this side but the sun would sort of rise and set on that side of the house so it had very little light didn't it it was quite bad but I it did have light coming through so I just used to move my posing bag closer to that window to use that light um, so yeah you can make do with net with whatever that's another story let's just move on Kelly <laughs> I'm just rambling now oh look at that that is a, this is just such a beautiful moment between a dad and his baby. It's absolutely beautiful. And you know, I'm really enjoying the, the lighting here as well. Like the baby obviously really stands out. Um, the one thing that I'm really, or is really frustrating is that dad's finger's been cut off down the bottom here. Oh, you've got to keep those fingers together and keep an eye on absolutely every part of the image even sort of you know the ear and the hair just coming up a little higher giving the top of the head a bit more room to breathe there but I do really enjoy um, you know the tightness of that crop I think that's really quite lovely with that direction of light you do need to to be careful though um, like the baby is is beautifully lit here but you've got quite a strong shadow um, here and then a really bright highlight there on the dad's face. So just be careful with that. That might be, if it's artificial light, just lifting that light a little higher so that it comes down more um, um, across the, the baby there. But yeah, just be careful with that. Um, the one other thing that's really grabbing my attention here is just this little triangle down here because it is brighter than the, the rest so you can darken that down um, again. But yeah, I'm, this is quite a, quite a lovely crop. Do you know, sometimes remember to move your camera. So what I mean is um, if we have a look, this is obviously a landscape um, crop even cropping here and going more portrait you can still have that beautiful intimate moment but you can get rid of a lot of the other distracting elements so when I'm doing something like this if I can't quite get that crop right in camera then I'll often turn my camera and shoot portrait as well so remember to get the different variations so that later on you can look at it and go I much prefer the portrait crop um, I'm, a, I'm a landscape shooter I have to remind myself to go portrait, but it is always a great thing to have in the back of your mind. <laughs> Didn't mean to cause a tangent. Oh God, I, I can go on. <laughs> you like to rambling, keep on going. <laughs> I'm glad one person does. <laughs> But yeah, and you know what, I really enjoy this black and white conversion. It's got like a, a bit of a, a muted kind of um, a warm tone to it, which is really quite lovely. It doesn't work with everything, so yeah. But um, no, the posing of the baby, baby looks comfortable. And just even next time, bringing that baby up a little higher, and I know it can be difficult, um, Bring that baby up a little higher so dad doesn't have to lean down so much because then you'll have him upright. You can still have him kind of, you know, snuggle into that baby, but you won't have that strong lean. And what I always find when I'm shooting more sort of uh, skin to skin shots is having a darker background allows them to be um, more the, the main subject of that image, if that makes sense. Because you've got all these beautiful highlights in here, but then you've got a, a bright background as well. So if you put them in front of a dark background, you're gonna make them stand out and they will be the main he heroes of that shot. 
but I am really enjoying this, but that might be just something to consider next time to see the difference there in those tones. Oh, look at that. This is lovely. I really enjoy the, the way that the baby's actually posed here because it, it, we don't often see these sort of side profile shots. We always see, you know, the baby's face, but the baby looks really comfortable and it looks like it's actually sleeping. And um, I love the way it's holding that little little heart. One thing I wish had have been moved was these two lines leading you straight out of the frame there. So if you are going to, to come in and shoot a close-up shot like that with these tassels, kind of have them and bring them around and keep them in the frame. But do be careful because they can create another leading line. So if we get rid of these... Um, little drawings what you've got here is you know a little line coming down around the baby's face and then it's bringing you down around the arm and it leads you into the heart and then this little hand brings you back up into the face so in terms of leading lines you've done that brilliantly but then we've got these two brighter lines that are leading you right out of the frame so just be careful of that when you're using tassels um, you know possibly even um, having the the bow come in here and then kind of coming down and placing it around there so it adds to the shape of the body. That can help um, draw your eye back into the image, so just be careful with that. Even darkening it down with um, in Photoshop will even help blend it into the background a little more so it's not so distracting. Um, and you can do that, um, obviously, again, lots of different ways, but um, if we, oh, I won't do it that way because then I've got to keep changing my brush. But if we, let's just say, for example, darken that layer down, and then you can use your brush to blend it a little more so it's not so distracting. So it's there, we just can't see it as much. Just like that. I have to say, you've just made the smallest change, but it's made a huge difference. Yeah. Like it's the smallest, simplest thing. And then there's a little bit of a line in here. And I know I'm being ultra picky, but you know what? When I look at my photographs, I'm always thinking about, you know, what somebody else might see. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm always looking to perfect it. I am a perfectionist. Sometimes, you know, it's a bad thing. Sometimes it's a great thing. But I want to produce images that are technically excellent because I'm a photographer and I take that, that role very, very seriously when someone's paying me for a product and service. And the only way I'm gonna stay in business as a photographer is to be able to create something and reduce work that people that are hiring me can't create themselves. So that's what we've always got to remember. Am I creating a, a high standard of work that they can't create themselves? Because if they can create it themselves, they, there's no need to come and pay me to do it. So that's how I'm gonna stay in business as a photographer. I'm always looking to perfect everything that I do. Um, so just bear that in mind. Um, another thing here that I'm looking at is the, the, the tones up here in the top half of the blanket. At first I thought it was my eyes playing tricks on me, but you can see that they're um, a little different in tone as they are down here. So these are a little, um, a little more um, purpley in tone. So let me just, purpley, good Lord Kelly. I don't know how I communicate on a daily basis. Actually, let's get rid of that. And hold in the alt key. So what I'm looking at here, see these tones down here? They're a little softer up here. They're a little different in terms of their tone. So just be consistent and it's, very subtle, it's very slight, but it is where that light is coming across. Um, so maybe just warming up that bottom half just a little bit. Also over here where you've got a few sort of um, darker areas, let me go back up here to my red brush. So we've got some darker areas up here and there, and the way to fix those without having to clone them out to lose the texture in the blanket is just to lighten them a little bit. Um, there's a few ways you can do it, obviously levels, curves, we'll do this really quickly and if you lighten those shadows you're going to get 
a much smoother blanket, but it's just where when you're shooting, um, the light's not hitting those particular areas. So you can see where I'm painting that on. It is very hard to get it nice and consistent, but I'm going to show you a trick. So now that I've done that, and you can see where I've painted that on in those darker areas, you can soften that mask. And we can blend where we've just painted that in. So it makes those the blanket a lot smoother. You get to keep the texture and the detail because as that light falls across anything that you've got on a posing bag, any of the supports underneath, it's going to create, create um, little uh, peaks and troughs. So that light is obviously going to hit anything that peaks in terms of height and then obviously create shadows where it dips down um, into those valleys. So you want to be careful with that. But don't you don't have to clone it out. Um, and because then what happens is I know a lot of people then like to paint over the back backgrounds but it um, it'll make you lose detail and texture and then what will happen is you'll most likely end up with banding alrighty okay so first thing that grabs my attention is um, the, the tight crop on this, you know, it's really quite constrained. Now I'm guessing this was done on a posing bag um, because we've got obviously, you know, quite a sort of solid line there underneath because if a baby really was hanging in a piece of fabric, it'd obviously be a lot rounder. Um, so you can see where it was, was lying on something. So I know that it's been done safely. Um, but that tight crop um, is really quite constraining. So just be a little bit more careful in terms of um, uh, you know, not allowing your image to breathe, I suppose. So, for example, you could go for a more landscape crop, um, and that would probably benefit this image more because it's more of a, um, in terms of the composition, the baby is quite sort of flat going, and there's a solid line underneath it, but then you've got two, um, you know, a hard crop with two sort of dark areas coming straight down and, and really kind of constraining the composition of this image so you want to allow it room to breathe and um, and have it placed a little bit more um, horizontally within the frame okay another thing that I'm looking at here is um, the the wrap itself the fabric itself is very sharp there's a lot of detail here so you can see that this is um, where the camera has focused. But the baby's face is very soft, so it's not in focus. So just be careful when you are shooting things like this. Obviously, brighter, more contrasting areas are gonna, the camera's gonna try and focus on them, so you've gotta tell the camera where to focus. Um, moving your focal point to the baby's face, so that that way, you know, the right areas of this image are going to be in focus. Um, also, the one thing that I'm really, really looking at here is this dark triangle in the background here. So whenever you do uh, uh, simulated, I suppose, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, Garrett will come up with it in a moment, but whenever you're trying to um, create an illusion is the word that I was looking for, thank you, um, that the baby is hanging. Um, you want to make it look quite consistent and for me, I, I, I am looking at this and I don't want to offend anyone, but I don't, it doesn't make me feel comfortable. Um, and that's because there's not a lot of fabric around that baby. So if you, if you bring the, the material around the back here, it's going to create more of a, a sort of a solid um, support around the baby to the eye to make me feel like the baby is a little bit more supported and comfortable there. Um, another thing, when you're doing something like this, you know, I don't think you need the hat and the pants. You know, make it all about the baby and and the wrap, um, so that it's it's not so busy. Because I don't think that the texture in the the fabric on the outfit goes with the texture in in what you've used to to you, for the wrapping um, to create that hammock kind of look. So yeah, look for different things like that. 
I do like your attempt at something like this. It's not an easy sort of setup when you are photographing a baby on the posing bag to do this, but you um, are almost there, just a few, other, few little things to kind of tweak and get that focus right. There's uh, also with the lighting, just be careful with the direction of that light. I can see it's really high and it's coming down um, in that direction. That's obviously because this part of the wrap is nice and bright, so is this part. You can see that it's hitting, obviously, the back of the wrap here where it's um, shadowed down here and then it's creating some harsh shadows there. So soften that light, bring it around more towards the baby's face and then so it's sort of coming, um, you know, from that sort of angle this way, not from up here because you've lit the wrap, you've lit the back, but not the baby's face. Okay, would you puppet warp to round it out instead of leaving the flat area? Do you know, I'm not a, f I don't personally puppet warp. I, it's, I'd rather get it right in terms of the posing and I was I'm talking to the TV screen, sorry, I'll talk to the camera. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I try not to puppet warp and you know, I see some people do it and what happens is that they make areas of the baby like the arms or the legs or the body uh, look a little squished. So if you are very if you have very good Photoshop skills, by all mo all means go for it, but I try to get that baby as curly as possible. What I can say about this particular pose here, if you are going to do something like that, this is um, uh, what I would consider a variation of the bum up pose. So what I can see here is that the, the leg that's coming through here, the hips are rotated. So what you want to do is pull this foot um, back behind this leg so it comes out here. And then you want to get those hips nice and square on top of the posing bag. When you bring that foot here and you square off and you, because you need to basically roll this hip forward um, to get those hips nice and straight, then you can tuck those little feet up underneath the, the body and curl the bottom half around towards that shoulder. You can see this in, um, in my bum up pose tutorial. I teach it and I explain absolutely everything, even how to support that baby to make it look curlier. And I, this baby to me just looks a little stiff. It looks quite sort of stiff. So um, to make it look curlier, you've got to bring that chin down towards the shoulder. My key points for the bum up are chin to shoulder, elbow to knee. Um, when you bring that little um, bottom half, turn that little bottom half around towards the, the front half of the baby. So yeah, I would, if I was going to do this particular setup, I would perfect that pose first, get a shot, then up, bring that wrap up and try and do it that way um, but yeah and what another thing that I'm sort of looking at here is when you're doing a black and white we have a lot of black in the background which has been darkened down and painted in and then we've obviously got um, some really bright highlights here where the light is hitting the wrap but if you have a look at the skin it's very gray so you want to be consistent in terms of your highlights and shadows when you are working with black and whites. Um, so let's just have a little look here. This is Curves in a new copy layer. If I hold the Alt key in, and I'm going to focus purely on that baby's face, if I hold the Alt key in and I'm going to push those dark shadows, I'm going to bring them into about 14, and then I'm going to push the highlights, and I'm keeping an eye on the baby's face. As you see, there's not a lot of highlights there so I'm going to bring that back to where I lose those highlights all right hit enter now if I add a mask and invert it if I paint that on to the baby's face now we're getting a little bit more contrast so when you're working with black and whites be careful of that um, in terms of the skin but keep an eye on that histogram really really important that you're not overexposing the details or underexposing um, in an image but yeah, sorry, I, I sat on this image for a while because I think it needed a lot of things to be pointed out because there's so much potential here, but there's also other things that I know other people will um, get, you know, get use out of, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think the, the feedback part of it is all coming across really well too because 
honestly the best CC I've ever heard anyone give. Ever. Oh, Sorry. thank you. And everyone's agreeing with that. And it, it's that just small bits, small pieces that all, all come together. Oh, I'm reading everyone's comments there. Thank really you. Beautiful images. Okay. Alrighty. The first, <laughs> look at this baby's face. This baby, has, it looks to me, and I, I'm, a, I'm making an assumption, like it has a little Kefla hematoma on in the top of its head here. Can you see that? My daughter was born with two, one on either side. She looked like Princess Leia. Um, <laughs> I would liquefy that in because it's not going to be there in a couple of weeks. When it comes to editing babies and retouching them, I always remove what's not going to be there permanently. So... Um, Whenever I, like, I look at little red marks and blotches on the face, I know they're not going to be there in a couple of weeks. I remove it. Birthmarks I always leave. The only time I, I, I don't touch anything or I don't do something is if the parents request it. So, for example, if there is a very noticeable bump on a baby's head, you know, when I'm working with it, I would be very careful with that area of the head. Um, you, with Kefla hematomas, you don't touch them, you don't push on them or anything like that. But I would sort of, you know, oh, what happened here? You know, birth, because obviously I can relate to the person's story. And I'd start that conversation with them and I'd just say, you know, in post-production later when I'm editing these photos, do you want me to leave it in? Do you want me to, to reduce the size of it? Because I know it's not going to be there. Talk to your clients and communicate with them so that you know what their expectations are and what it is that they, they want. So one good thing to, to point out here. So... Um, Let's have a look here at the histogram. We've got a lot of information there hitting the edge of that histogram. When it hits the edge of that histogram, we've got our highlights down here and we've got our shadows obviously up here. When it hits the edge here, we're going to be losing detail. It means there's not a lot of information. So if we bring up our curves palette, that shows it a little better. Um, and if I hold the Alt key in, let's move it over a bit more. If I hold that Alt key in, you can see now where I've lost detail in those highlights down here so you you've got no information there whatsoever and you can see there's a few sort of areas up here and down here as we bring that in you can see it is not the baby at all so we've underexposed the baby but overexposed the the background and the wrap that's what you've got to be really careful of when you are photographing babies on white or anything on white for that matter because when I'm not photographing white I always expose for the skin tones but when I'm photographing on white, I have to expose in terms of my camera settings for those those bright areas, the white. Um, because when you do overexpose them, let's come in, you can see there's no information there. There's no texture, there's no detail. Um, if you had to print this image, it's it, there will be nothing on the paper. It will just be paper because there's no detail. The printer can't see anything because there's nothing there to see, if that makes sense. Um, so this all comes down to the direction and the intensity of your light. I, I don't know what type of light source was used here, but what I can see is that the light is coming in and it's hitting the background um, and it's hitting the wrap and it's not hitting the baby. So bring that light in. Fo focus on the placement and the position of that light because if I'm... Um, if just let's just say that this is my light if if the light is pointed behind me I'm going to light behind me so direct that light to the baby's face elevate it um, if you've got a big soft box on it turn it slightly away so the spill of the light is going to come off the edge of the soft box and light the face but when you think about lighting um, if the light is too intense too bright move it away uh, use a large modifier to soften that light source. Feather that light if you need to, but always have the light closest to the main part of the image that you want to light, which in our, our case is the baby's face. So that's where you want to light the image. Um, and then you want to focus your um, attention on getting the, the detail, obviously, in your whites, which is where, when you're shooting, always have the histogram up on the back of your camera so you can see um, where your, you know, where that information is in the file. Because when you just look at the back of your camera, and actually, Garrett, where's my camera? Oh, it's on the table there. Can yeah. you pass me that? 
Now, I can only talk Canon um, because I've never shot with a Nikon camera. I'm a Canon girl, so don't ask me anything Canon. <laughs> Nikon. Nikon. Oh, God. <laughs> There's coffee. definitely not enough coffee today. Alrighty. So I'm just going to bring up an image that I shot the other day because it was all white. Okay. So, so you can see the back of my camera there. Now if I was to look at that when I take a photo, I'm shooting white and it might look a little over, overexposed to you at the moment because um, of the camera not being able to, to read those tones, right? So Garrett's just touching it there. But anyway, if I was to look at that, I'm not going to know if I've got detail in those highlights because that LCD screen on the back of my camera is is not going to give me a true reading of the information that I've captured in terms of you know highlights, shadows and midtones. So let me put my arm down. Now if I bring up my histogram and I show you that, you can see in my, I'm going backwards here. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Right. You can see my highlights here, they're not hitting the edge of the screen they are um, hitting the edge of that, that graph. So I've got detail. The minute that information starts to hit the end, I know that I've um, overexposed my highlights and I've lost detail. So this is why when you're shooting, you always have to have your histogram up on the back of your camera so that you can see everything um, that you're capturing. So the thumbnail will give you an idea of your composition, your camera angle, all of those things. Make sure you've got that focus right and, and things like that. But that histogram is what you've captured. So you need to have that up on the back of your camera so you can focus on getting all of that information perfectly exposed in camera because it's very, very hard to fix in post-production. Um, I could paint over this and I could put a texture in and I could bring the, that, you know, put detail back into that area to print, but I don't want to do that. I want to get that exposure perfect in camera so that I'm not having to waste time fixing my photos later on, which again, getting it right in camera explains all of that. Um, and that's why I taught that particular class. Okay, um, another thing that I'm going to sort of just quickly mention here is the crop. We've cropped very tight to the top of the baby's head and the bottom and we've got a lot of information down here and um, not so much in the background. So if we go back to our crop tool, give the baby a little bit more room. Whenever I'm doing side pose or bum up pose or anything like that, what I look for is to place the baby in the bottom two-thirds um, of the, the screen. And then the information that's in the background there, that's, you know, that's meant to be soft and out of focus and blurry because it's behind the baby. So it's nice to have that, that space around the baby, but in the background, not the foreground. If the baby's up here, you've got a lot of information down here that's not really contributing to the image, but it's in the foreground, so it's before the baby. You want to bring that baby down into the bottom two thirds and that's just a matter of you know tilting your camera up and down when you're getting that that camera angle and that composition right in camera lots of information today mm -hmm. sorry i'm taking a long time okay and We're now oh good lord <laughs> i'm sorry everyone you're probably waiting for your image um <laughs> move your body around to the top of the baby's head um, so you're positioned here and the, the, the lens is pointing down to the top of the baby's head because right here um, you're positioned you know, down here and you're shooting in from this direction so the foot's going to be out of focus. It's the first, first thing um, you look at when you see this image because it's the closest thing to the camera and then we're shooting up the baby's nose as well so we're starting to see those nostrils. So move around to the, to the left there towards that baby's head. All right. Oh, this is lovely. So I can see that a lot of time has gone into the styling and the setup of this. Um, yeah, the color palette combination is, is really nice. And look at this, this little headband. 
all the colors and the tones and details match what's been placed into the background. I really like that. Um, so let me give you some tips here because I think you're onto something. I don't think you need the wooden floor um, because there's a lot of texture in that wooden floor. Uh, there's a lot of lines, so it's quite busy. So it is um, a large area of the image that has uh, lots of different tones. We've got lighter planks here, darker planks. We've got circles, we've got lines. There's a lot going on in that background, which isn't necessary. So use a solid background. Um, you know, and it, it, even I, I bought a sheet of plywood many years ago for $12 and I stained it to dark brown. And it's got that, that texture of wood in it but because it was an even tone and there were no lines from the planks, it gave a more consistent background. So whilst it had that earthy kind of feel to it, it wasn't distracting and it wasn't busy. So think about things like that that aren't expensive that you can use in your studio. And I just used to, to lay it on the floor or I would have it against the wall so I could shoot that way or, or down on it. And I've still got it and I think I've had that for about 10 years. I've actually stained it, um, restained it with linseed oil, which works really well too. Um, when you are positioning plants and things like that around the baby, just be careful um, with the prop that you are kind of using it because I can see that there's a lot of time and energy has gone into placing these, but the prop's kind of covering most of it. So um, maybe use a, a prop that's not so high off the ground so that it's a little lower so you can place those um, you know, plants and, and, and flowers um, a little more around the outside so you can see more of them because when you shoot from up here and you shoot with a wide angle, what happens is it's going to distort it, um, whatever's you know, um, there and you'll see less of the, um, what's around it because of the, the difference in height. So use a lower prop to the ground is what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't, I did, I did, I did, I did, spat it out. And then we've got, you know, the wrap on the floor. So it's kind of coming in and down and then around. So it's kind of a, a busy line coming across the angle of the baby. And then we've got another line coming here and then another line here. So just be careful when you are putting things like that in because they're not complementing each other. They're kind of going against each other and cutting through each other. And then what's happened with um, that wrap coming across there, you've got um, another sort of area here with a different texture coming through, but you can't really see it anywhere else. So now we're gonna talk about texture because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we've got down here seven. We've got seven completely different textures. Oh, eight with the headband. So that's eight completely different textures. When you're styling, try to use textures that are going to complement each other, that aren't or that aren't going to compete for each other, because they're quite strong textured textures. Um, flowers are a texture, believe it or not. You've got lace, you've got lines in a wrap here, and then you've got a knit, a thick knit down here, and then you've got a woven basket. Um, and then you've got obviously lines and texture in the floor. So it's so busy that it's distracting. But there's so much going for this as well, but you just need to often think that less is more. So try to go with textures that are a little bit softer, a little bit more complementary to each other. When I'm putting different things together, for example, I might use a wooden bowl. I'm gonna use a soft textured canvas backdrop. I'm gonna use a wooden bowl that's got a texture in it, but it's gonna be a consistent texture. I'm then gonna use like a wool inside the prop, not a knit, because the knit's gonna to be too distracting. And then I'll use a beautiful soft wrap um, with maybe another soft texture in it. So always think that, um, how is that gonna to work to, towards that? It's always fun, fun to play in the studio, but I find that if you dedicate time and once or twice a week and an hour, two hours at a time, just sit with all of your things and go through your props and see what works well together. Um, and then that way when you go into a shoot, you're not fiddling so much. Garrett says that I fluff too much. He's always saying, stop fluffing. But 
you know, I'm always looking for to perfect those textures and there's so much going on here around the baby that and all we're seeing of the baby is this in comparison to everything else even though it's about the baby but that's a very small part of this image okay I have an idea for a future tutorial Kelly how about baby prop backdrop accessory color matching I could use help in that area for sure do you know what let's do it it won't be tomorrow, but let's do that. <laughs> I think that's a really great idea because I often just sit in my studio and we'll call it Come Play With Me. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think this image, you like the, you kind of nailed it so well because all of the colours mm. work so well together, but I didn't even see the texture. And then when you pointed out all the texture part of it, mm. I saw the, the distracting side. So the colours were absolutely nailed though. Oh, so beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. And the time, and it is frustrating when you take so much time to do something like that and then someone like me pulls it apart. So I'm sorry, but next time, um, you know, in the back of your mind, you'll hear my, my dumb voice and, you know, you might see something before you take that shot. Okay. Oh, look at this face. Alrighty. Um... Okay, I, the the wrap and the headband and the blanket here, I really love this colour palette and the baby's skin tones, the baby's face is just gorgeous. There's a couple of things I'm going to point out here. Um, I, I don't know what lens was used here, but I do know that it was a wide angle lens, um, purely because of the size of the baby's nose and the size of the head in comparison to the baby's body. So when you are shooting with a wide angle lens like a 35mm, um, be very careful that you're not distorting features. It's hard to see when you don't have um, something to compare it to, but be very careful when you are shooting um, close up like this and coming in because you will, um, you will change the shape um, of the baby's face and the body. Because if you have a look at the size difference, let's go around the baby's head and then around the body. And I can't see all of the body, but the baby's head is a lot larger than its body and that's because it's so close to the camera when you're shooting with a wide angle lens that it's going to distort it. It's what it does. Um, there's a free lens video on YouTube. Just look up Kelly Brown. It does go for about an hour, but it is so worth it and we break down lenses and I work and I do it, did it with a Canon expert. You don't have to use Canon though to get information out of this because we talk focal length, we talk aperture, we talk about prime lenses, um, we talk about zoom lenses, you name it. I even do a little bit of a demonstration with my fake baby just to show the difference. But this um, this here is quite, um, quite dramatic in terms of um, that lens choice. But the skin's beautiful, the fall off into the background's beautiful. The only other thing that I would sort of recommend here is if you are going to go with a tight crop like this and it's hard when you're shooting with a wide angle because you know you've got to get so close to your subject so for example if I'm shooting this is a 24 to 70 this is what I shoot with all the time so it's nice and versatile but I shoot with this at the 70 mil focal length. So I'm always zoomed in. So that way I don't have to get so close to the subject. And um, <laughs> I was gonna say, I'll pick up that baby down there. But there's a toy doll in my office here that my dog's been playing with, but it doesn't have a head. So I can't <laughs> show you. But <laughs> let's just say for example, right? I can focus now there but I can't focus there. So it's only letting me get as close, and I'm focusing on the baby's face on my computer screen here, but it's only getting letting me get about sort of 20, 30 centimeters away from the subject at a 70 mil focal length. So when you come out to about a 35, now I can get to there, but the baby is a lot smaller in my frame. So therefore, I can't come in and get that tighter crop because I can't get close enough with my lens. Obviously, it's going to be different with a fixed 35mm, but knowing that focal length and how tight you can crop um, without having to crop it in post-production and remove a lot of information is going to be really valuable to you in terms of your file sizes. But if you are going for a tight crop, you want to come in and get a tight crop. 
um, because you've cut through down here in terms of your frame through the bottom half um, of the baby there and through that leg. So don't chop through um, limbs, very important thing to remember. If you are going to do a quite tighter crop, I would have possibly um, come back a little bit and left the bottom half of the baby there um, in the frame. I wish I could show you more um, on my camera, but we're not set up here to do that. We're set up here to do a critique, so I'll continue. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> right. Um, okay. So yeah, compositionally, we're almost there. We can see, um, in terms of my rule of thirds, that the body baby is in the bottom two half, bottom two thirds of the frame. Now it's not working. The words, um, but just a little bit lower with more background and less foreground would be distract would be less distracting here because all of this foreground here is very soft and blurry and it's it, you can see where it's coming really kind of close to to the camera that that floor of the um uh, the posing bag where the baby's laying so yeah come up a little higher with that camera angle and shoot down as opposed to you know getting down and shooting square on so just elevate yourself a little bit what I can see here is that um, the baby's obviously wants to be really tucked in here, but just bringing that chin up a little bit um, so it sits, so the chin kind of sits a little bit more on the back of that hand. I always get my safe shot when I find it hard to get that hand underneath the baby because, you know, they can be touchy, they can be jumpy and stiff and might not want to lift their head up, but I'll come back, get that safe shot. So if I'm taking this safe shot, I'm allowing that baby to kind of relax a little bit because if you keep moving them, keep keep adjusting them, they're going to keep responding to your touch um, and not allow you. But the minute you kind of step back, let them relax, let them sort of um, get comfortable in that position, take that shot, get your exposure right, come back in, then lift that face up to get that hand right up underneath. Because when it's in front like this, it's going to squish the face, but you need to get that hand up underneath that cheek. And what I do is I just kind of get my thumb and I give that cheek a little bit of a pull up so it sits on top of the hand so it's not so squished. Um, what I can see here is the obviously the direction of that light source is great. It's coming down and hitting, hitting the baby from this direction. Uh, this area here is brighter than this area here. So just be careful. Also lifting that baby's face up a little bit. Um, so when it's on its side like that, when it's down and the light's coming, um, obviously it's going to, to miss that face. So lifting that chin up a little bit towards that light will help. And just giving it some more support there. Um, yeah, and be careful when you're using obviously white again to not overexpose it. You can see down here in the histogram, there, there is some information there, but it's very close, so that means it's very, very bright. So it is the brightest part of the image, so it can be distracting. Um, I don't mind the little foot all kind of tucked up here. This foot here, um, you could possibly tuck where the, so let's just say, for example, that's the leg underneath the baby there or coming down in this direction. Um, just tucking that, that foot up a little bit um, more underneath the baby will bring that foot in a bit closer so you um, you won't have that gap there from where the foot to the bottom is but again bring your body up and around so you're not shooting so low shoot from a little bit higher bring that chin up so you can move your body around a little more to the top of the baby's head and then you won't see its bottom and then just with skin tones because the background's lovely you've done a great job pulling that blanket really tight just be a little bit more consistent with those skin tones because we can see we've got you know lovely warm tones here but then we're starting to cool off down here in the cheeks there's a little bit more magenta in there and again with the feet so just warming those areas up <laughs> that is cute oh my goodness Look at that. Alrighty. Do you know I'm really enjoying this? And I could see this I could see this being printed really well. Oh. Okay, let me know if you are joining me again. I think Facebook was trying to tell me that I talk too much and it said, yeah, uh, yeah we've had enough of you. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, sorry about that. It just completely, the broadcast has completely um, stopped. So we are just going to continue on. I'm almost finished. We've got three people back. We've got three people back. <laughs> but I've got comments coming up here. So okay. I'll keep track on the comments and we can continue on. Radio. So, sorry about that, guys. Let's keep going. Okay. Um, I, I, if you didn't hear what I said before, I really enjoy this image. You know, I could see this printed really big. Okay. Let me give you some tips on how you can perfect this. If we zoom in, okay, we can kind of see what's going on here in the background. We can see um, the light, we can see everything that's in the studio. <laughs> so with items like that, um, and it's such a shiny object, and then we've got sort of more a flat surface over here in terms of the baby's skin. Um, to bring down the shine, you could do a lot, but I would really grunge this up a lot because it's got such a vintage you know, look to it, this, this helmet, that I would probably add like a texture to this and you could have a lot of fun with it, couldn't you? Um, yeah, so to get rid of a lot of that sort of, um, that shine, I would add a texture and um, kind of rough it up a little bit and then it would hide what's going on down here in the background as well. But, you know, there's a few little things that you could do. Um, I'm in a new copy layer here. Okay. So, yeah, bringing down those highlights on the hat and just adjusting some of the shadows in here where, you know, you can gel it a little better. Um, just if we come in a little tighter as well, we can see there's a bit of a highlight there around the back of the baby's head. Um, a few things that you can do to kind of fix that. Again, uh, new copy layer, you can darken that down, add a layer mask, and then using your brush at a low opacity and nice soft brush, you can kind of come in and darken down some of those areas. You can use the clone tool, you can use lots of different things. So you want to remove any of those sort of haloing things happening around there. You can use dodging and burning, you can use a 50% grey layer, you can use lots of different techniques. But just get the, the, uh, the shadows consistent and some of those highlights and you'll notice a huge difference. Uh, what do we got over here? So just here again underneath the baby. So we've got a very soft background and then we've got texture and detail in the baby um, skin. So you want to be a little bit more consistent there. But yeah, darkening down the areas where the baby would have some shadows, which is definitely underneath it. Um, and you can even increase the shadows on the baby as well. So you can see, because if you've got different light sources, um, you want that those shadows to be nice and consistent around the baby. So just adding some shadow will help those two elements gel together. And yeah, remove some of those red skin tones. I would darken down the skin here on the baby as well, um, on the belly because it is quite bright there. And you can see the, the shadow just here. And you can see the shadow here underneath the strap. Why is that not changing color? Oh, it's because I'm on a mask, do. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention, Kelly. Okay, so yeah, this little um, shadow down underneath here, but then you've got a highlight here and a highlight underneath it. So maybe darken down some of those brighter areas um, will we'll make that a little softer in there and not as distracting. But yeah, I would also look at the... Um, the contrast in the baby's face there but yeah i think this has got potential i really love this little setup you could have a lot of fun with it um you could potentially i do like the the texture in the the flooring there but i would also have a look at just softening the lines um so that they're not as as strong um when they whoopsie 
when they're um, bright like that, they can be quite distracting. So you can soften them or remove them. It's entirely up to you. But yeah, you could have a lot of fun with this. But when you're putting images together, just make those sure those shadows are nice and consistent. And, um, and your lighting is also consistent. But yeah, have fun with textures, all of that kind of stuff. I cover a lot of that in, um, in my award editing workshop as well, which you know would really benefit this image. Alrighty. Okay, so the first thing I'm, I'm kind of looking at here is the, the particular type of crop. Um, and I don't mind this as a bit of an angle, but I would have the baby's head higher than the body. So I would rotate your camera from that same position just so that the baby's head is higher in the frame. Um, because it kind of looks like it's a, a little upside down here. Um, I, don't, I don't mind it, but it is just a little awkward, so I would definitely bring that baby's head up in the frame so that, because our eye naturally le reads from left to right, so I would have it um, a little higher because as your eye sort of lands on the frame and then the body will lead you into the rest of the image. Because if you look at it from a... Um, a from your rule of thirds, you, when you have the, the subject's face positioned in these, um, you know, axes, then the eye is what's going to lead you through the frame in terms of composition there. So you're going from one, one to the other, which is what you want to do. Okay. And with the direction of that light, what I can see is that it's coming from this angle and it's coming straight up underneath the baby's nose so it, in doing so it's highlighting the edge of the nose here and creating little dark shadows there and then it's creating some dark shadows here underneath the eyes as well so it's not the most flattering direction of light um, what you want to do is have that light source coming in from this direction across the baby's face and then that way you're going to get a beautiful fall off and you'll get some lovely little shadows coming down here and down here and they're going to highlight the features of the baby's face which is exactly what you want. Alrighty, I do love the styling. I think the wrapping is done beautifully. It looks nice and firm and tight but not too tight. The baby looks comfortable. Um, the bonnet's a really lovely match for the background and the wrap um, styling is, is really beautiful as well. So just change that camera angle. And when I said before, like, you're in the right position, so to get that baby's head elevated, you just have to rotate your camera from left to right. So if the baby's head is on the left, rotate your camera towards the left, it's going to raise the baby's head. Alrighty. Okay, so now let's have a look at our next image. Alright. I kind of don't mind the fact that the baby's so small with inside this, um, this space. I often don't mind that because what it does is it kind of reminds you of just how small babies are. But when you are you know, working with this much negative space. Try, let's let's have a little look here at our rule of thirds to start with. So the baby's not exactly in the center of the frame. Um, to, to do that, obviously, you know, getting that camera, rotating that camera right in camera. And then in post-production, if you didn't get it right, just bring that baby around and a little bit closer to the center of the frame there. So that way you've got, um, you know, that, that perfect balance. It's nice and centred. It's not just sort of slightly off. So, yeah, to soften, soften that, those edges to blend it a little better when you're doing that. And then you 
just have to adjust obviously the um, the tone there in terms of um, highlights and shadows just bringing it down a little bit over there and possibly up there that's a great way to, to fix it because when you do it with the crop tool you're obviously removing a lot of information from that file um, okay let's have a look here at the the baby there's lots of texture in here which is beautiful as we head out of the frame though we're starting to lose some texture and get a little bit of banding so just be careful of that when you do um, paint over the backdrop and, and things like that because you can end up creating problems that will be quite prominent in print okay the baby's skin tone is beautiful um, on the face I would probably just warm up um, the hands and the feet a little bit more to match the skin tone there and probably just darken down this leg here because it's so bright it's drawing my eye down to that leg to, to look at it so then I can see the foot but what happens is the wrap is cutting through the rest of that leg and foot um, so it's a little disjointed so if you're going to to um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here if you're going to to be a little bit more consistent obviously in your lighting um, you can darken down some of those highlights so that your eye is not drawn away we can also see here that um, that the light is coming down from let's go it's coming down from this direction here so it's obviously lighting the nose because it's up and the shadows um, down here in the chin um, are being created because the, the light's so high that it's coming down here and what I can see is um, the shadows down here obviously being consistent and that's the perfect way to be able to look for the direction of that light is to follow where the shadows fall. So I would possibly bring that light slightly around more to the front of the baby's face and then just lift the baby's chin up a little bit and to do that again I mentioned it previously just placing a little bit of an extra support underneath the back of the baby's head here to lift that chin up not from the top of the head lifting it down it's going to bring um, bring that face around yeah I love the color palette it's really soft and muted the the wrap that's coming out here is really quite distracting because so we've got beautiful round curves here but we've got straight sort of lines down here so just be a bit more consistent in terms of the placement of things um, soften this up if you want to have that wrap there just soften it kind of bunch it in a little bit more around the baby what I always try to do with my wraps is um, is bring them and tuck them in down here so they're not kind of sticking out so just tuck them in and around the baby and soften it up a little bit but you know when you're working with that much negative space you don't even need the wrap to come out like that it's not adding to the image it's drawing your eye away from the baby because there is so much negative space it's competing for attention so less is more I would take a photo with that look at it and go oh, what am I seeing what's standing out the most and then go back tuck it in um, and get a shot without it just so you've got those two options all right oh look at this this is beautiful okay so let's have a look first of all let's go to our crop so we can have a look to see if it's nice and centered and it is so I'm always looking for the exact especially when I'm doing something like this which is smack bang in the middle of the image I'm always looking for the distance from you know either side top and bottom to make sure that the baby is nice and centered so that's one thing to look out for um, I can also see here in the background some lines so we've got some lines coming down here in the frame so that looks like it's some type of texture in the in the background the flooring or a mat and you can see that there's some going that way and some this way but they're very very soft so I can also tell that the background has been painted over and softened be careful with that because if we go in and have a look at this 
what that's kind of creating is a little bit of banding where that darker tone meets the lighter tone because when you paint over pixels um, you're removing a lot of the quality of each pixel and so what that does is when you reduce the quality of that area and there are different shades in tone it will create banding um, it doesn't print well so if you wanted to remove a lot of that I would possibly look at some different textures and for this I think this is such a strong image I don't think it needs the softness that's there you do want to have you know an element of softness which is for me the placement of the baby's hands they're beautiful and soft and where they're sitting that's the softness this image needs but in terms of the the editing like I would give this um, some contrast I would give this um, a little bit of grunginess because those metals are old you can see that there's you know um, there's some history there within those metals and I would add to this image with the same level of grunginess that's in them that that same sort of rawness um, to can be consistent with the the what it is that you're trying to portray and tell here um, this particular one here where it's a little little darker and you've got the background to gel the background with that I would use these tones in the background I would look for some textures that have got you know some great detail in them not that they're overpowering the subject obviously you'd soften the texture down because the you know you want your main focus to be up here but yeah I don't think it needs to be so soft because if we come in over here you can see we've got beautiful detail in the hands and the middles and then we start to get quite soft as we come off and into the background here um, we can see where it's been softened around the edge of that prop as well um, what I would do with the wool here is I would like use a highlights um, a lightened layer and then a darkened layer and I would come around so instead of softening it so much I would just spend the time with my brush and I would lighten the shadows and darken the highlights to make that more consistent and I do that a lot um, I often use just a 50% gray layer and I'll go through um, something that's quite textured like this and I'll even out all of those highlights and shadows to make it look a lot softer than what it is um, and with the background down here you know give it some contrast where those edges meet it doesn't have to be so soft I think you've done a really great job though the um, like I said the placement of the baby's hands are just beautiful <laughs> he's got like this little frown going on here the light is lovely coming across the baby and just be careful of some of these highlights here and around the edge here um, of that white wrap because you've got sort of gray flat tone here in the wrap and then we've got bright contrast and detail here so yeah just with that consistency but I love this I think it's beautiful okay oh this baby looks so peaceful it looks really sleepy I think you've done a great job there that hand is out a little bit in front of the face so just lifting that that chin up towards the ceiling and um, and pushing that wrist um, from there in underneath the face and giving that that cheek a bit of a pull will really benefit this um, what's really grabbing my attention is this white wrap so we've got a white wrap on a cream background and a cream teddy bear I'll probably stick with the same tones um, and not throw that white in there the the light also seems to be missing the baby's face the baby seems quite flat and dark but you've got you know contrast and detail over here so it's almost like that that light has come in it's missed the baby because what I can see is the posing bag or the fabric I'm not quite sure if the posing bag has just got a really deep well in it or the fabric's been lifted here what happens is when the baby kind of goes down inside that posing bag so let's just say that the baby's down in here I'll use my beads again the baby's in the cup of my hand because the blankets coming up or the bags going down when the lights here coming in um, the light is going to be blocked by where that blanket comes up so you need to either bring the blanket down or bring the light up and direct it more in there so that's something to look for because it's just missed the baby 
but um, you know the baby looks comfortable and I can see you know that it's a very natural natural look here um, and you've done well cropping um, baby's head is higher than the ba the body which is great I would possibly just bring your body around when shooting this particular um, pose and, and set up you're kind of coming in from this angle down here I would move your body further around to the top of the baby's head because you've got your lens is is focused right here on the bottom of the baby's nose you want that lens to be up here on the top of the baby's nose alrighty and then just with those skin tones um, they will improve once that light is corrected so when you bring that light down across the baby's face um, you won't have so many problems with these darker red tones because the light will improve your skin tone a lot alrighty let's keep going we're nearly done guys um, ah this is the rice paper wrap look at this baby and look at these little feet and hands <laughs> absolutely beautiful the styling here is really great I just love the the background the um, the tones that have been used here and the texture here this is a good example of um, you know l more subtle textures working better together so they're not so distracting they're complementing each other and the, the color the color palette that's been put together here is really quite lovely. I'm also enjoying the basket here that's got um, some more sort of purpley tones but they're carried through into those those blue purpley tones in the flowers so I think that's done really well. One thing when you are setting something like this up is just be careful um, that the placement of things like stems don't become a distracting element because down you've got all of this beautiful softness around the baby and then down here you've got you know a lot of sort of sticks um, that look quite sharp and and not soft um, sticking out from the bottom of the frame so try and bring those up and around um, the baby there uh, around the prop sorry but what I like to do is is kind of um, either cut them off I've always got a, a set of scissors somewhere in the studio cut them off so you can't see so much of those stems or try and um, bend them further around underneath the prop so that way they're a little bit more hidden I think your camera angles great just be careful when you are adding a vignette into your image that it's not creating any banding off into the shadows there because we've got lots of de texture and detail in here where the lights obviously coming in and then when you start to soften the edge and we add a vignette we start to get a little bit of sort of um, banding and inconsistency heading off into the edges of the frame there so just be careful with those um, the light across the baby's face is lovely and um, you know again the wrapping and the posing the one thing with this particular wrap is hard to do is get that wrap right up underneath that chin so just grabbing that little bit there pulling it and tucking it down in behind the neck there will um, will remove that little bit of skin that we can see because it is a dark wrap it's kind of creating a hard line through the the area there um, yeah another thing is you can see that this basket's got handles um, what I would do is bring the fabric right to the edge here um, so fill it up a little bit more so it's right up and around that edge because it's a little distracting and if we zoom in and have a look here um, I mean this is obviously when you're printing something um, you're going to see these lighter lines here around the edge of the handle so where it's a bit lighter where we've toned down the background to match the foreground just be careful with that um, because they will appear in print if you're not seeing them on your image like this and then you go to print it you'll go oh what is that um, so yeah that's another thing to be careful of but I love how the baby's in the center of the frame it's so different it's unique it's um, it's beautiful just a couple of little things to fix up alrighty okay so I'm not seeing a lot of detail here in the background 
If we go into our curves palette, you can see the information in the file. There's a lot of very dark information. And then we've got these sort of mid-tones over here. So there's not a lot of highlights. So it's a very underexposed image. We do have to be careful when we are in capturing these photographs that we're getting that exposure right in camera. Um, you can see that there is a wrap behind, um, if we use this, I can tell you where this information sits. So it's quite dark in here, that's where that information is. And then over here, the skin tones and the shadows, and then the highlights, there's the brightest part of the baby there, are down here in the mid-tones. So you've got to really push that exposure up so that the baby, um, those, those skin tones are sitting up here in the exposure, which means you're going to have to reduce your shutter speed so bring that exposure um, back just a little bit to allow more light to come into that, that sensor. Okay, what I did want to show you here is... Let's get rid of these. If we're holding this Alt key, you can see now where we're losing all of the detail in the black, so there's nothing there. So. It's a very, very dark image. There is detail around that wrap, so I can see it. And if we go in a little bit, you can see there are parts of that wrap. Um, now, black and white image, but there is a little bit of color in here as well. So that will print um, in a lab too. So I can see where it's all been darkened down. If we zoom out again to there, it looks like the baby's kind of just sitting on black, nothing. Um, and then with the feet being tucked up like that and the wrap covering the bottom half of the baby, um, it makes it look like it doesn't have, it's missing its bottom almost. Um, it just doesn't kind of sit comfortably. Uh, so just be careful when you are darkening things down like that, that you're, um, you know, you're not losing all of that detail. Uh, I would also just have rotated my camera slightly to raise that head up a little bit. It just has a more sort of um, softer flow throughout the composition, throughout that frame. The, um, the other thing in terms of um, the, the exposure, the direction of light is quite lovely. You know, I can see these little shadows down here around the nose. Just be careful though of some brighter areas um, there that, that are distracting. But yeah, I think you've done a great job. The, the wrap, I mean, if I could see the wrap, that would be part of the, the baby, so it would be around here, so it would make it look a little more um, connected, I suppose, to the background, if there's a little bit more detail there. And just adding a little bit of contrast to that baby's face, because it's a little flat. So if we go in again to our curves, if we you know, bring in our shadows, and then we bring in our highlights and we can bring them in a lot because there's, we can bring that in a bit more there. Um, now you can see the contrast in the baby and that's, that's what you should be looking at when you're creating black and whites. Noth you want highlights, you want shadows and mid-tones. You don't just want mid-tones. Okay. Right. Look at this. Look at all that hair. My <laughs> goodness. That, that baby was born with a do. <laughs> it is hard to edit fabric and things like that around a lot of hair like this. Um, so you do have to be careful when you are putting a babies on certain backdrops and things like that. If you're not getting that backdrop perfect behind hair like this, it's going to be really hard to fix it. Um, and what I mean by that is that We've got a lot of little wrinkles, lumps and bumps around the baby. These are really distracting. When you've got a full head of hair like that, I can guarantee you, the parents said the minute they saw that baby and that baby was born is look at all of that hair. That's the first thing they would have said. So when a baby comes into your studio or you're going to photograph a baby with this much hair, talk to the parents about that, get a feeling for what it is that they think about that hair and that do. Focus on that when you're doing your setups and making that, you know, um, a main key feature. Like if a baby came into my studio, I'd never put a hat on it with a head of hair like that because it's just too good, it's too cool. But what's happening here is we've got a lot of um, distracting kind of features 
that are taking your eye away from that hair. Um, the lines in the blanket, you can fix those by tucking them in, taking the time, taking, um, you know, being careful with where you, you tuck things in and, and you position them. When you are positioning um, a darker wrap, a darker area like this, and then you've got darker down here, then you've got a really bright area over here, and then you've got obviously a lighter mid-tone um, bed. So it's not very, um, um, in terms of composition, it doesn't, it doesn't go very, it doesn't sit very well. Uh, it's, an, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for here? I need to be more accurate. Or... Well, they're not, the, con the contrast in tone and color is not complementing each other. So what we wanna look for is um, a more sort of fluid tone or range that'll draw your eye through the image and not compete for attention with the baby. So what's happening over here is because we've got um, such high contrast between this area and this area, it's really challenge, challenging the viewer's eye to come back to the hero of the shot. So when you're creating beautiful setups like this, and I can see you've taken a lot of time and care to even place flowers, um, just be careful that those tones aren't too contrasting. Like I said, that then they become distracting. Um, the wrapping on the top of the baby looks great. Just down here though, we've got a few areas that are a little loose and sticking out, so they're not very neat. So you wanna tidy those up a little bit next time. Um, and then just tucking it in so, because you've got a straight line and a straight line, and then we've got straight line, straight line, but and then obviously another straight line here, straight line, straight line, straight line. But then we've got, this is not straight. So it's obviously straight when it comes down there and then it comes over here. So if it was a bed, then the mattress would be straight. So you, and you tuck, when you get into your bed, your bed's straight, the mattress, edge of the mattress is straight. So you wanna tuck it all that in to make it look a little bit more like it should. Um, and I know when you're using different props and things like that to elevate the baby, it can put a few lumps and bumps in, but you can liquefy if you need to, if you can't get it absolutely perfect in camera. The light on the baby's face is, um, is great. It is quite intense though, so you might wanna soften that just a little bit. Uh, I can see the direction of that light obviously coming in from over here because we've got shadows coming down here. Um, I'm not sure what the why the flowers are there um, they're kind of just sticking out and then the edge of the frame crops through them so just be careful with that when you are using detail like this um, you know make sure that it adds to the image doesn't take away from the image in terms of distraction so with this particular image I probably would have come in um, let me go back up here to my crop I probably would have come in a little closer and got rid of you know some of that distraction and made it more about the baby's face so because that's what the babies want to look at they don't want to look at the bed they don't want to look at the flowers and you know I know we see a lot of other photographers using you know props and, and lots of different elements and creating beautiful setups and then when when you go to do it it doesn't quite come out the way you have visualized it in your head um, this is where you need to spend, like I said previously, those couple of hours in your studio just playing and putting things together. See what works. Photograph it with, um, you know, get a, a fake doll, um, just a cheap one. Put it inside the prop. Have a look at the direction of your light, the intensity of your light. Have a look at the way that you're putting different combinations of colors and tones together and see what's complementing, see what's not, see what's distracting because there's so much going on here around the baby that my eye doesn't know where to land. Um, there's a lot of different leading lines and I think um, all of the time that you've taken to put it into this, the parents just really wanted a photograph of their baby. So when we do use props, when we do style with different elements like flowers and, and things like this, um, you know, it, it has to, to draw your eye into the baby. When we use different elements like that, they use them um, in terms of your composition to create leading lines that draw you into the baby, not away from the baby. Um, use you know soft, muted tones that work really well together so that the baby becomes the hero of the shot. 
um, if, if that makes sense. But yeah, styling is something that takes a long time for you to get your own you know, look and feel for. Um, but you know what I, I love doing? I love looking in homeware magazines. And I love looking at, um, uh, you know, different sort of um, fashion stores online. Because when you look at how they try to sell an item, you're trying to sell a photo of a baby. So think of it from this perspective. They're trying to sell a dress online. So they're going to style it, they're going to light it, and they're going to position it in the frame and use different objects and elements to draw your eye in to sell that dress. Because if they don't sell that dress, obviously they go out of business. Same as us, if we don't sell the photo, we go out of business. So when you think about trying to sell an image to a client, it's not about, it's not so much about all the other elements that are in the photo. It's, it's, it's about the baby, but it's how you use the elements to sell the photo of the baby. So you want to use um, different textures, different tones, different um, elements like you know leaves and flowers and things like that that are going to draw your eye into that baby and not be distracting. They're going to complement it and add detail and tone. So that's something that I would really consider um, next time you're doing this because I think you're there, you're so close but it's just a lot going on that we're really losing, um, you know, losing the baby in amongst everything that's, that's happening around it. So yeah, that is me for another month of, um, of critiquing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long one, I'm sorry, but you know what, I, I do love doing these image critiques and I know that there's a lot of people in the group that might be a bit scared to submit an image or, or they miss out. So I try to do it in a way that can benefit everyone because I see photos posted daily in our group and I, I see people giving constructive critique, which is fantastic. Um, but I can't be in there every day doing critiques because obviously we're working, we've got a studio to run and, and everything else. So I do this once a month and I try to give as much as I possibly can to, to help or give you an idea of what to look for next, next time you're in, in a session. But based off these 20 images, you know, lighting, um, camera angles and styling um, were probably three things I really did uh, talk a lot about so my best advice for all of those different things is to just get in your studio and play get off Facebook get off the internet stop looking at what everyone else is doing and go and play see what you like uh, one of the best things I ever did in my studio was go in and pull everything apart I put all of my props on the ground everything that I had and I removed everything I don't like personally and I just played with everything and I rearranged it and looked at what went well together because there's nothing worse than when you are in a shoot and you've got a baby that might be a little unsettled, a baby that might be a bit fussy and you've only got that split second to get that photo but you waste time trying to find a wrap that might go with that blanket or you waste time trying to position um, a different flower or something like that. So, and here's another, here's another thought. When your clients come in, you, it is good to be prepared, but talk to them about what it is that they want. When you're creating photographs, you're creating them for them, not you. So listen to what they like, ask questions about tone. Are there, is there anything on my website that you've seen that you really like? Is there anything um, you know, that you don't want from today's shoot? What sort of colors do you have in your home? Because I'm hoping that everyone out there is printing their photos for people to hang on their walls. So when I print a photo to go on someone's wall, I want it to complement their furniture, um, their decor or, or anything else that they have uh, in their home so that's something to always consider but talk to them let them help you um, style that session you can you use your creative flair and your skills and talent but let them help you guide you to creating a, a photograph that they're gonna love because if you're adding a lot of different elements and they're kind of sitting back being polite and not telling you that they don't necessarily like that they're not going to buy that photo that's how they politely tell you that they didn't like it so you want to sell every photo that you create, so talk to them about what it is that you want to, want to do and, um, and create. And if you want to play, 
and do what you want to do get models in <laughs> or if you've got an idea talk to your client you're going to get a gauge of what they're interested in and what they're not interested in talk to them throughout the session and say hey I've got an idea I'd love to try it is that okay and do it towards the end of the shoot so but that'll depend on them and their baby but I'm going to go because I've done a lot of talking and I've got a lot of work to do it has been great um, I'm s yeah I'm super excited to see the next 20 images in August and I will see you guys back in the group very soon. Bye.